my secrets We're encouraged like a second skin The kids are all dying We're dying to believe again Run through the open streets We take what is needed to pray today but no one's listening anymore do i need to fade away or stay laying down on the floor i want to know if you beat the shoulder that i need i want to go so take me to neverland find a way where is the god that i need can i get some help today lord help me with the blood that i bleed i want to know if you beat the shoulder that i need i want to go so take me to neverland Taking over me, I can't be the only one left. No, oh, oh, oh. society breaking up on me. I just wanna be fair.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Meta. We've had a few weeks off, but we are ready to dive right back into it. My name is Ewan Yardis Reed. I am joined by Adam Toasted Brewman for the first game back. We have the New Zealand teams, Avondale College and Linfield, going head to head to kick it off. Ewan, while school may have been out for two weeks, the competition between these two and the skill levels which which they are playing at hasn't gone anywhere. We know that these players have been playing very consistently well uh, in their previous metagames, and honestly, I expect them to show up today. I'm really excited. Exactly. Be very excited to see what these two teams bring to the table, and... Do they obey what we are considering the meta right now, Toaster? Because I've done a lot of casting over the last couple of weeks, and the same things really do appear when you look at the higher elo. Specifically, the jungle impact cannot be understated. And the biggest one that always seems to arrive in the, in the question, Toaster, is Jarvan. Is he really first pick priority for these players? Well, look, it's really dependent i think especially because avondale college are the first pick the draft might be a little bit different i think there are a couple bands specifically in that bottom lane that need to be taken care of if you are linfield so i think in this case you might have to give over the jarvan or the hecarim or something that is really high priority at the moment to get rid of something that i fear is actually worse in the situation Exactly, but so far, none of those high priorities that we were considering at Toasted have been taken away. Vladimir being taken away by Linfield. The Darius and the Kled does put a lot of focus on Knockout, Steven. You do not want to let him take any of these snowball-heavy champions, because if Darius or a Kled get ahead of the opposite number, it spells disaster for the team. And a lot of these top lane champions, all three bands thrown at Knockout. Yeah, no, a lot of uh, attention towards the top lane in general. Five bands all looking at those flex picks and specifically all available in the top lane. So seems that this is how both teams want to play the game. I'm sure they've scrimmed against each other and uh, bunted heads before. Kaiser, the final ban, uh, you know, maybe looking at Azir a little bit more. All right, but Master Yi locked in as a blind now. This concerns me a little bit because... The biggest solution to a Master Yi is bring hard crowd control. Do not let him get those Alpha Strike resets. So I want to see Linfield, are they going to go for like the Nautilus, the Maokai? Like what will Linfield do as a solution to Master Yi? Uh, honestly, I think that, you know, as we're saying, things like the Javan are open. Uh, never mind. They're going to pick the Udyr for themselves. Very, uh individual sort of comfort picks coming out of both of these junglers but Udia does quite well into the E they sort of uh have the same style in that early game sort of farm up and deal massive amounts of damage once you get that one two items and honestly I think Udia has the better early game in that 1v1 duel yeah cool. we'll see how that goes as we are seeing some very fun champions being locked in the Udia is not something I've seen in a while the Fizz blind is especially risky because there are a lot of champions that didn't do quite well into the fish. We'll see how that mid lane goes when we do see the matchup. And Morgana locked in from the side of Avondale College. I really like. I think Morgana is just really well-rounded as a champion. And you could put it to Mercy, and I'm expecting it to go to Mercy in the bottom lane. But it could go to Year 13 student in the mid lane, who actually, never mind, he locks himself in Lissandra. Yeah, and uh, I mean, Lissandra, as we all probably know by now, that Aftershock makes her one tanky uh, Ice Wielder. And against the Fizz, she has a really good matchup, actually. Fizz doesn't really have the potential to engage on her. So I actually really like the pick of the Lissandra out of Year 13 students here. Exactly, but on the other side, Linfield round out their first round of picks with the Fiora, who's more than likely going to go for the split push in the top lane. But... It is a little concerning because we're seeing all three, top, the top half of the map, all three members, the top, the jungler, and the mid laner coming out of Linfield very early on, which means there is a very real possibility for counter picks for the side of Avondale. But speaking of counter picks, I was talking about it before we came live toasted. Zio has gotten a quadra kill and then a pentakill on Vayne in this very tournament. So seeing it being banned away is uh, a lot of respect and a little bit of fear uh, faced towards Zio there. Oh, definitely. Especially when you were saying that it was consecutive weeks. I had the pleasure of being able to cast that 4K game, but I missed the Penta 
the following week. And I, I don't really see why you wouldn't focus that Zio when it seems like he is the star player of Avondale College, from my understanding anyway. So, uh, two picks, they're very strong in the meta with that vein, that Siva, but there's still a multitude of AD carries available to Zio that work really well with a Morgana. Caitlyn's still open, Jinx is still open, Varus still available. So, I gotta think, what, if you are Linfield, are you going to bring to the table in response to grab that aggressive lane? And... As we're about the aggressive lane, uh, we do have the Caitlyn locked in, so a hell of a lane bully for the bottom lane, and... I'm going to be very interested to see what does Bunny take as backup. They don't have access to Lulu and Karma, but if they're still a mage type of support player, Janna is still a real possibility. But we'll find out. Avondale College, though, looking, what does Zio want to take? As we said, we know now he's up against a bit of a lane harassment, and I do like the lock-in of the Ezreal, a safe AD carry for a little range. Yeah, no, Ezreal works really well as a counter. I like the way that this just played out. The Kaelin to deny the Kaelin Morgana, very, very dominant lane. And uh, in response, it forces out a more uh, safe AD carry that has very different win conditions to the Kaelin. And uh, it means that on the side of Linfield, they now personally, I think they have the better sort of engage earlier on. And so I think we might see them try and push that... Uh, prerogative towards the side of Avondale in the bottom side of the map. Exactly. And talking about the bottom now, we finally do get a round out of the compositions. It wasn't the Janna that I was hoping for, but Nami fits the bill quite nicely with the healing and, of course, the utility that she will bring to her AD carry. But what kind of interests me is Avondale College did elect to go for the tank versus split push uh, matchup in the top side of the map with that Dr. Mundo. And it is kind of up to the Fiora now to get that split push online because Fiora, when it comes to the 1v1, is very difficult to handle. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, you're definitely not wrong there. I mean, I understand the uh, thought process Avondale have going right there. You know, Fiora is someone who loves to be that Grand Duelist and deal percentage health damage to you. Well, the way you can counter that is by giving a massive injection of health into the champion going up against them. But my fear for Guilty Feeling in this top lane matchup is... What about when Knockout Steven does pick up an Executioner's Calling? Because uh, if he's not silly, which I don't think he is, uh, he's going to pick that one up so that even when his Ignite's on cooldown, which he has elected to take for the early game, uh, he has a lot of kill pressure on the Mundo because it makes that healing sort of useless. Exactly. Mundo's like, he is the regeneration tank, and there are a lot of ways to deal with that right now in League of Legends. Merlin Omicron, uh, Executioner's Calling, and of course Ignite. Now, on that point of the Ignite, I find it really interesting how uh, Knockout Steven has actually elected to take it because mm. it's a bit of a uncommon occurrence for top laners to bring Ignite. Typically, they're, they're relegated to teleport duty because the top laner needs to go deal with side waves. So in this area of Linfield, they do have the teleport coming out of the Fizz. So it's not like they have no side lane uh, macro options to make. It just feels a bit ambitious and very confident, perhaps, coming out of Steven saying, I am winning this laning phase so hard to the point where the split push game and your macro calls won't matter as much. Yeah, no, definitely. And I, I do like the idea behind it. I believe Yorick Diggs Graves actually swapped off of the Ignite or Cleanse, it might have been, if I'm mis mistaken, uh, for that teleport to allow Knockout Steven to get that early uh, aggressive summoner, right? And you can see already that level 6 engage that Knockout Steven's going to go for here because of the Ignite to counteract the the Mundo press R and heal up over half your health bar and run away, right? So I like this out of them, but my only concern is then, well, how, like, let's put a situation in your heads where it's 25 minutes, there's a Baron, you know, maybe uh, on the side of Avondale, they have priority and a couple of Mountain Drakes under their belt, then, okay, well, you know your Fiora wants to be split pushing the other side of the map. That's Fiora's role. Really not exactly the most splendid team fighter in the game of League of Legends in the current state. But then your TP's on the mid laner who should really be around with his team playing an assassin on the Fizz. So I feel like the teleport, it's going to be interesting to see how Linfield want to play this one. Maybe we might see something unconventional with the lane assignments. You never know. Uh, but either way, I think they will find a way to make sure that no matter what happens, they don't lose out on that Baron. Exactly. We'll see how that goes as we will be loading ourselves into the game. 
Another interesting thing I do like to look at quite a bit nowadays, Tosin, is I love to look at what engage opportunities teams have. Because when you fall behind, if you do end up falling behind, you need to have a solution. And typically, that's engaging, forcing a fight, forcing a pick. And I look at Avondale College, I think, okay, you've got Lasange who can throw herself in. You've got a Morgana who's always that pick potential. And if you're really desperate, you can just pop ulti on Mundo and just throw the tank into the front line. But then I look at Linfield and I think to myself, how are you meant to be starting fights other than running Udyr forwards or having a Nami tidal wave? So I'm a little concerned if Linfield, feel, if Linfield fall behind, they will struggle to actually catch up because they can't force the fight to catch up in the game. No, I do definitely agree with you there. I feel like if Avondale do get ahead early, like let, let's say the Yi gets a couple kills, we all know how scary a Yi can be when he gets ahead. And uh, as you were saying, right, the counter to Yi is a lot of hard CC. But Ewan, I fear for Linfield that they may not have enough under their belt. As we all know, he becomes immune to slows like the Caitlyn uh, 90 caliber net, like that uh, Fizz Ultimate chum the waters. And so I feel he's just going to run through your team composition there and potentially slice you all down, cut you down to size there if he does get a lead. And he'll be able to easily uh, grow it across his map and in the form of you know gold everywhere, tower plating if he does get ahead. I think he's always a great option to go for. But... Uh, that being said, I don't think it's any easy task to get ahead on the E when you're facing down the likes of an Udi in the early game. Exactly, we'll have to find that out as we will be loading into the game in hopefully only a matter of minutes, not even as looking down the keystones that we do get to see loading into this one. Uh, there isn't honestly anything too surprising. I mean, let's shoot on the fears. We're seeing the aftershock out of Lissandra. Everything is what we're expecting out of the Keystones, but I want to see what we can actually see out of the players themselves, because knowing the Keystones you run can influence the style of gameplay you're going. And specifically, Houdia is running Conqueror instead of Press the Attack, which typically you see Press the Attack as we will be loaded into the game uh, right now, actually, guys, and making sure we are all synced up to make sure we are able to give you the best League of Legends that we get currently meta. Yep. Uh, so... All right, so we'll be getting into it at three, two, one, go. Uh, wait, 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 wait. I, did, I didn't get the timing uh, correct there. <laughs> what what time did you want to pause at? Was it 15. 10 or 15? Okay. 15 to start. All right, I am ready. Apologies about that one. All right, I'll just double check that our beautiful spectator is ready to rumble, and we should be good to go. So we're going to go in three, two, one, go. And hopefully this time we'll be ready to rumble for <laughs> Avondale College and Linfield going head to head against one another. And I really want to see some early level one shenanigans, specifically out of Avondale. They have the Morgana, they have Alessandra, they have a ton of CC. I want to see them try and utilize that. No, I definitely agree. Uh, the one thing that, uh, going back to runes, that kind of not so much catches me by surprise, but I sort of would have expected was the conqueror coming out of fiora considering you are into the likes of a mundo and of course i understand mundo can deal a lot of damage and uh having that extra bit of sustain can definitely help you out matching it knowing he's gonna have grasp as well but um you know having the conqueror i feel would have been that edge for early game taking the ignite i don't know personal preference maybe I, when it comes to the fiora i feel like it is a lot of personal preference i know some players that say themselves well Fiora already does percentage health damage. She already has true damage in her kit. Why would I need more of it, you know? So I see their rationale there. I do, I'm sort of on the fence. I do quite like the grasp of the undying in this certain scenario. It simply means that even before Fiora gets her healing item, she can even rush the Trinity Force or a Black Cleaver before even going into her ravenous height. So yeah, I do quite like it. It gives her a little bit of safety and sustain lane. And Mundo is going to be building tank. Fiora doesn't have to even build tank and still gain HP thanks to the grasp of the undying. So we'll see how that works itself out when we get to the later stages of the game. But right now, both junglers are starting on the lower side of the map. And I want to see, are we going to see some cheeky jungle pathing toast? Because this is something we discuss a lot uh, during other casts and when we're off air. It's what are we going to see? Vertical jungling? Are we going to see sideways jungling? Like, what are they going to be bringing to the table with battle control? Well, I mean, I, I don't think we'll see vertical jungling this game, uh, at least not for the first clear, because uh, both junglers did start that bottom side and have elected to you know, sort of 
go towards that opposite side of the map for the scuttle if you are knockout D. Um, so I think you are quite safe if you are the Udyr in that matchup to have you know, your jungle kept clear because he is going to head towards that top side right now. And I think in in the play style of these two where you just want to scale, risking the vertical jungle is... I, I don't feel worth it because you never know what is going to happen. And when you don't have priority in the lanes, we know that the Lissandra is going to shove in Fizz in the early levels. The range to melee kind of dictates that Yi actually heads towards the top side. Coming to give you a little bit of a visit, seeing if they can force something out of it. The flash is burned, but it's not going to save a first blood coming out, but knock out D. And that's, once again, this is exactly what we were talking about, Ewan. If the Yi gets ahead to the point that he can just stomp people, gets like two or three kills under his belt. Udyr coming in, he wants to try and avenge his top laner, but I don't think he has the damage for it. Force the Ghost out, Bear Slap isn't going to save him, the Cleaver takes him out. And that is two kills happening, three minutes in the game. Avondale off to a good start. Uh, look, that one kind of caught me off guard. I kept talking because I expected it to just be sort of walk away kind of thing, but... Going in there, a little bit interesting. I feel that's a little bit of a mistake on Love Thyself's part. And uh, now there's two kills on the side of Avondale College at three and a half minutes into the game, you and not exactly what I call desirable, but also not at the point where you cannot come back. It's only, you know, 400, 500 gold to each of those champions. Exactly, not in a, a too bad of a position just yet. And it's partly because I do look at the likes of the uh, Mundo and He's going to struggle when you get to the latest stages in the game. So right now, getting him a bit of an early advantage is going to put him in a better position than he was because the CS numbers aren't exactly going in his favor right now. Yeah, no, uh, you should definitely correct that. And it makes sense. Like, guilty feeling on the uh, the Mundo that not exactly the highest priority uh, when it comes to this matchup. Fiora definitely has the higher damage output and dueling potential in general. Uh, as we see, D trying to show his face more on the map. As he was saying, you get that early lead, you want to spread it to the other lanes like the plague. So then you find yourself with a three, four, five thousand gold lead at 10 minutes. Exactly, and I do quite like to see how active Knockout D is being with the Master Yi, because typically you think he's like, oh, he's playing a scaling jungler, he doesn't really want to do anything proactive around the rest of the map, but finally we're seeing Love Dazel come in with the Bear Slap, he is going to get the CC down, but I don't know the damage, the Ring of Frost slowing down Love Dazel, the Ignite is dropped as well, the Udi might be in a lot of trouble, he is going to go down, no, not going down just yet, Yorick forced to flash away as well after nearly assassinating Lissandra, but couldn't get a kill either way. Yeah, and I mean, uh, I think that both these junglers are playing this really well. D just it, is right there when he's needed. Uh, you know, saves year 13 student there. Uh, sure, the Flash and the Ignite traded for just the Flash on uh, Dig's Graves. It, I mean, it's not optimal, but the amount of pressure brought out there and sort of the, the same no factor from D there to s deny that kill onto year 13 student is really, really valuable, I feel, and is making sure that they don't lose that valuable lead that they've been gifted from the side of Linfield. Exactly, and Linfield need to try and get them a bit more of a tempo advantage. They aren't sitting too far behind in terms of gold, but in, in ways, it just feels like tempo. Each time we've seen Love Thyself, it has not gone that well for him. And he got uh, killed in the top lane when he tried to avenge his top lane, and now he's forced to burn his yep. mid latest flash and his own ghost. Um, with the play in mid before, so I I do kind of like his attempts, but it is not working out right now. And part of that is the reason I feel like CC at the end of the day, there's not a whole lot of CC to help set up the Udia because you can't really gank a fierce. He can't set you up that well. Your best hope I feel like is Nami Nami's bubble, but when you look what they're laning up against, are you really going to be able to land a bubble against a Morgana Ezreal? No, yeah, he's actually, Love Thyself is in a really difficult position for lanes that he has available to him because, you know, the Fiora's going to be pushing Guilty Feeling under. Uh, you can't really do much against an Ezreal and a Morgana. Lissandra's your best bet there, but it's a Lissandra really, really uh, reliable ex escape with that Glacial Path. And I feel like what he's done there, snuck a cheeky Infernal Drake at six and a half minutes in, is the only way he can really play things at this point in time. Just get the lead where you can, and I love the way they are being proactive with every fiber of their being. 
Exactly, Linfield not bow bowing down just yet. Love those selves. Like, all right, I may not be able to help out my laners uh, with ganks, but I can sure as hell help out them, giving them a hell of a buff with that Infernal Dragon. But Knockout D trying not to get out class is deciding to visit the bottom lane now. There is the CC landing, a beautiful bubble, but a beautiful duck biting, and this Caitlyn's got nowhere to run. The Flash isn't going to save you there. Yeah, the Flash blown is just, I feel a five minute cooldown gifted over once again to the side of Avondale College and Knockout D has done so much for his team in these first, you know, seven, eight minutes of the game. Two kills and an assist under his belt and he's honestly, I'd say he's denied that kill mid onto year 13 student. So a lot coming through and love thyself trying to do everything he can does have the infernal but just not able to match that proactivity at this point also being out farmed right now as oh that's close that was the uh that was a blind steal there was a ward there unfortunately yeah. zio couldn't grab that for himself but uh, on the other lanes there is something that is quite fun we do get to see the master Yi has completed the blood razor and is building towards either the Gwintu's Rage Blade, or, and I've seen it lately, specifically from the uh, Calcept, <laughs> Wit's End on Master Yi is apparently quite a popular item now, Tosin. So we'll see which one the Yi decides to go for. But another item that you mentioned and predicted very correctly was Knockout Steven rushing the Executioner's Calling against Guilty Feeling Fundo. Yeah, and uh, honestly, I feel like this might be a little bit of overkill when you do have the Ignite uh, available, because as we know, that does apply Grievous Wounds. I feel like you can afford to go for something like a Phage first, and then opt in through the Executioner's after for any subsequent engages with that Ignite down. But he just wants to be on the safe side and have as many opportunities to stop that healing out of Mundo from uh, being an annoyance to him. As uh, I'd like to see that, sorry, to cut off my own point there, Zeo and Mercy taking out the ward together, it sort of shows the synergy between a bot lane to be able to grab it in those few seconds before it does disappear from your sight. Exactly, and denying vision that bottom lane. Sure, it's not massive. Actually, we'll come back to it a little bit as there is a bit of a dive. Guilty Tower is trying to tank it up. It is a three-man pile on Fiora is not getting out of this one. He's the first full kill. Like feeling flashes over the wall. The healing reduction, not enough. A double kill for the Yi. 4 0 and one on a hyper-scaling jungler. Turn the waters though. Can they turn this around? The Alpha Strike denying a little bit of damage. The S13 shooting, tanking out the turret, and it's gonna die, but it's an execute at the end of the day. Wow, and that is huge that it is only an execute. Lin Linfield get nothing from Avondale College in that exchange, and on the other side, D is massive. 4 0 and one on a Yi with a completed uh, Blood Razor and having a recurve bow with the completed pickaxe as well. He's over 50% of the way towards getting a Gwinsu's Rage Blade under his pocket at 10 minutes into the game. That has got to have the side of Linfield shivering in their boots at this point, Ewan. Exactly. He's got the most gold in the game right now, sitting at just under 5,000. And when you look at the rest of it, the closest follow-up is the Ezreal, who has Kleptomancy, and he's still a thousand away. So that is such a good position in Knockout D to find himself in, because of all champions you want to get fed on the side of Avondale College, it has to be the Master E. A fed Ezreal's a difficult to deal, but if you stay out of range, he shouldn't be able to get you. A fed Master E will run you down no matter where you hide. Yeah, definitely the best option uh, for just damage output. And I mean, the one thing that uh, Linfield does have to deal with it is that hard CC, which they do have some of. They have the Nami bubble, the tidal wave, Caitlyn traps if if you can hit D with them somehow. You know, Udi's got the bear slap. And I mean, you have the potential there, but he's so fast in his Highlander that it can become very hard to hit the man. I... I don't yeah. know, you just gotta be so, so careful about how you go with this one. And I think even in the position you're already in as Linfield, you have to think to yourself, how do we approach this? I don't think you can five on five them for the, you know the next 15 minutes at a minimum because your your Fizz and your KO, uh, and your Caitlyn, my apologies, need to get to the point where they can dish out consistent DPS. I'd say Caitlyn doesn't really dish out that consistent DPS that I'm satisfied can really turn a fight until she has three items, but I'm willing to say two, four potentially if they play it perfectly. 
Well, we'll have to find out as they do grab themselves an Infernal Dragon on the side of Avondale. So matching it one for one right now, but because they took the Dragon, I do like this out of Linfield right now. They are forcing the Rift Heralds right now. They're trying to say, okay, you take an objective on the bottom, we take an objective on the top, but that could start the next fight. So it is, there is the contention. Knockout the now going on to the best. Like, love myself right away. Wait, but he's in the middle of the front line. He's going to go down. A lovely pickup and the Rift Herald as well. Beautiful punishment. Ooh. Coming out of Avondale. Oh, a dark lady. Whoa, flashing from Mercy. Actually, CC being laid a bit too heavily, actually, with the stun coming out, and there is <laughs> no way Yorick is getting his wealth out of that one. Yeah, D comes into. Uh... We'll, we'll say it's a kill secure right there, just to accelerate the Yi, and I honestly think that is the right move still. Getting that Yi piled up with as much gold as possible is your number one objective, and that, that tower has got to be hurting right there. Once again, more tower plates, more gold for the Yi. If we have a look at the gold difference, there's I, there's just under 3,000 in the difference between these two junglers, and uh, at 13 minutes, that is nasty as hell. That's really not what you're looking for for the side of Limfield. The fact that a Master Yi is sitting so fed right now, 6 0, sitting on 6,500 gold grand total is really not beautiful. So it's, it's a bit of a struggle right now for the side of Limfield, but there are still answers. As you have said before, Toasted, uh, there is a lot of CC that you can use to stop the Master Yi as Guilty takes a chum of the waters, but I feel like this might be a bit. But actually, the turret coming in to help Guilty Pleasure has no ulti, has no flash, and Yorick decides, yeah, I'm gonna flash this one, I want this kill. Yeah, Guilty Feeling does not have the ultimate off cooldown as Steven may be a little bit Whoa, dead. yes, he goes forward, Steven's like, all right, I challenge you, boy, can I kill you? Yes, he can, the healing is gonna keep him alive as well. Now we're like Mercy getting run down by the man bear taking the bottom lane, and Zio has been flanked, but the ultimate is gonna take him down, a control ward's not saving you there, mate. And I love this out of Linfield. Once again, Ewan, we talk about this a lot on and off stream. Uh, I hate it personally to see a team who is in a very bad situation. Uh, you know, Linfield are looking at the stuff of nightmares, a 6 0 and 1 Yi, uh, and just rolling over. Rather than doing that, they say, no, we are not going to just let them take the stuff for free. We're going to go for a bit. Oh, so going for it. Knockout D is going in. He's going to shred Knockout D then. Uh, sorry, Dig out Love Thyself as he is hunting down. International Air is going to get killed as well. A double click coming in. The reset for the ultimate. The ignite coming down. But Bunny's not able to do that. A triple kill. Master Yi is the master of Summoner's Rift. Yeah, and uh, I was going to say it's great that they get the tower, but it's no longer worth it if that Yi, who once again, your worst nightmare, Gets a triple off that and now has a completed Gwinsu's and also is building it towards. Oh, this is no, cruel. This a is... Death Dance Master Yi that's already <laughs> fed is never going to die. So Avondale feeling very confident with the way their jungle is playing. And I mean, you can't really blame him. He's been very proactive on that, forcing ganks. And when you look at the lineup that they've drafted, a lot of CC heavy teams. And I love to see carry junglers paired up with CC heavy laners, which is like Morgana. You look at the Lissandra, you think yourself, yeah, there's a lot of damage and a lot of ability to keep them in one place, enough to be easy to get on top of them. Yeah, and, and then even with Guilty Feeling, just that beefy. Oh, oh my lord, they're gonna shred him down. Actually, no, Zio gets turned around with a crit headshot, taking down the opposite oh. number. But now Lissandra, the hell over there, this tomb is fit for you, taking you down. Bunny's gonna join his AD carry in death, a double kill for Lissandra. Meanwhile, the subside, love they stuff is getting tower dive. Guilty feeling finds one cleaver, and that's all it needs right now. On the bottom side of Mercy taken down by Yorick Diggs Graves. He grabs himself another kill and a shutdown gold going over to Fizz, who's now 3 1 and 0 with a fully completed uh, protobot and the sheen in his back pocket as well. And at this point, the Fizz is probably the saving grace of Linfield right now. The person who does have damage up front as... Oh, Linfield going in there. Can he get the kill? The CC is not there. And Master Yi executes Fioran. This is, a, this is an 11 and 0 Yi, Fioran. You cannot be fighting this man. No, honestly, on the side of Linfield, I want to see... Setting up that line of vision, you need to know where Knockout D is. Otherwise, you have no business to be 
anywhere outside of your base, honestly. Uh, because if you know that the Yi is bot side, you do have the uh, ability to push out that top side of it, right? Because you know that you're not at risk of a Yi who already has almost three completed items. I'm sure he's about to buy that Death's Dance. Uh, to jump on you so this is how they should be playing it they need to have vision set up and i only really see the one control ward and a normal ward in that river to really find valuable vision at this point in time and that's not gonna cut it you it really is not and we're seeing how so linfield is that a significant chunk of gold about six thousand six thousand gold and most of that is in that difference between the junglers as you have stated knockout d doubling the gold of love thyself so doing really well but it's not just the one man jungle show despite all the attention uh that has been thrown on to the jungler because the bottom lane while they are oh and two uh each individually they are still doing quite nice of themselves but they are going on to the caitlin she's gonna get a one shot buddy's gonna join and that is how you set up a hyper carry prepare yourself in the bush wait for them to walk in and delete them and Look at you may even want to hunt them down some more. Yeah, and honestly, I I kind of don't understand what happened. Whoa, Ooh, the flash! He really wants to force it. He's going out to Taurus, boy. He's going oh. fishing. Grabbed himself two more kills. Doesn't give a damn that Taurus is shooting him. The death stands keeping him healthy <laughs> and potentially cracking over Linfield's base. Yeah, Knockout D is a madman right now, and honestly, it's very fitting that his support's name is Mercy, because heroes never die at this point. And honestly, it's 18 minutes, and they're taking out an inhibitor, and, like, they don't take it, but they, they have the pressure on the Nexus Towers, which is... That's crazy to think about, and it's all because D got that early lead, and as we were saying in Champions like he did manage to gain that lead and take it across the map to where it was needed. Sure, he's the one who picks it up, but he's the one who makes sense to take those kills. Exactly, and they are doing a fantastic job, Avondale, with working around this champion they've broken open the bottom which now means that their bottom lane is going to push for them infinitely while that inhibitor is down and now they can start looking at the other lanes baron spawns up in a minute and i honestly think they are in one good position to force and take it so i do think that limfield are going to be forced in a do or die scenario where they have to go check vision around baron they have to risk the fact that if Avondale engage on them, they're probably going to lose the team fight. And if they don't go and face check it, then, then Avondale are going to grab themselves the Baron buff and they're probably going to lose from the Siege game. Yeah, like, honestly, I don't see why, like, Knockout D and his, his minions at this point, his allies don't just rush down this Baron or at least bait it, start it up. Uh, and say, well, Linfield, you have to make a move. Because, honestly, the only thing that they can do to potentially win a fight is to take out, to, is to knock out D, right? Uh, but I don't know that they have the damage I think like, he's necessary, better, right? by the way. And honestly, yeah. I, yeah, I, I he's think he, can, he definitely can right here. He's so far ahead. Has got the lifesteal in that death stance as well. So I don't think it's, I don't think I don't think I don't think Linfield know that the Baron has actually been started up. They're poking around, but they're playing they so know. far back, and I think they may realize it just now. But Love Thyself is in mid lane, like he's going onto the Udi. The Baron's probably not long for this world, and there is a jungler from the looks of it. As Baron finally goes down, they realize, wait, wait a second. How did you take that? Only Marcy Yi was doing it. And then you gotta realize Marcy has that with said. Marcy Yi is 15 and 0, and Marcy is taking control of this game for his team. And look, uh, Ewan, maybe at the end of the day, I might not like to accept it, but Cowset might have been onto something. He is a Yi challenger one trick in Korea for a reason. Uh, sure, it may be Yi, but you have to have skill to get to challenger in any region of the world. And D is playing this, honestly, just as well, if not better than a lot of his games. Exactly, and now they are potentially looking to end. They're taking two inhibitors. They have it, the Baron buff, and they are going to force it here. Linfield, they have to do something. It's a do or die scenario, and I feel like they may just bleed out as they need to pull the trigger, but I told you about that lack of engagement before, and look at that. He runs in, just gets deleted. Look at D now. He's able to pick up one, able to pick up two. Can he grab any more? The CC train coming up, grabs himself a third kill, a possible pentakill as he dives up. Mountain is guys international. They will grab themselves the game right here. Avondale College executing Linfield on the back of Knockout D. And that 
was brutal to watch you in. That I, I am not going to sleep well tonight knowing that I may encounter someone like this man in my solo queue games. Yeah, it's definitely a terrifying prospect. A 18 and 1 Master Yi at the end of the day. The one death he had coming from fountain diving the enemy team. But Avondale did a really good job. Yes, they ran a bit more of an unconventional uh, composition when it comes to when we look at the meta, but they made it work. And part of the reason they made it work is that they didn't just pick, oh, I'm going to pick a, a hyper carry jungler and then pick a standard laner. No, they had a lot of CC to bring to them. They had the slow from the Mundo. They had the hard crowd control from Lissandra, the hard, car, hard crowd control from the Mercy, and even Zio's Iceborne Gorn that does al allow him sorry, to get a little bit of a slow. So all the CC setting up that Yi can chase down anyone he damn well plays in Linfield. We saw it in that last fight. I questioned who's actually starting the fight if this team falls behind. The answer was Udia running into the front line and Udia got torn apart before he even had a chance to get close. I mean, that's it. When you haven't opted in for the Cinder Hulk, yeah, you've got the tank item second, but you're not nearly tanky enough, even if you do have the Cinder Hulk, to take on a 15 and 1 Yi when they're knocking at your, uh, your Nexus, honestly. Exactly. But guys, thank you very much for joining us for the first game of tonight with the New Zealand Qualifiers where Avondale College took out Linfield. We will be back in the 5 o'clock, so about an hour and 15 minutes for, I believe, it's the AEST Broadcast Time Match Zone. So guys, please, we're excited to see you then. On behalf of myself and Toasted, we'll see you later this afternoon.